Tonight we're gonna to take apart this orbital valve, also known as a steering control unit. Show you guys what one of these things looks like on the inside. So when looking at this port layout, what we have here is the pressure in, is the back right corner over here. That's gonna be from your pump. Your out, which is actually not pressurized, it's just flow. Uh, you don't have the same pressure on this out line that you do on the other three. So this is one where you can actually run uh, something like transmission oil cooler hose, which is rated for 400 PSI, that works fine. Uh, this is gonna be the port you wanna run, oil filter or cooler if you've got one of those, any gauges you wanna do for temperature, all that kind of stuff. Anything you don't want pressurized to that four three to 4,000 PSI, these things can see in all three of these ports. You're gonna want all the, run all the auxiliary stuff off that return port. Uh, then you get into your L's and R's here. As you can see on here, we've got those highlighted out. You got the R right there and your L right there. So basically, simple as this. When you're turning your wheel to the right, it pressurizes the port labeled R. Turning your wheel to the left pressurizes your L fitting. But when you're wanting to turn right, that means you need to pressurize the left side of your steering ram. Turning to the left is going to pressurize this fitting going to your passenger side which throws your steering ram to the left or to the driver's side allowing you to steer that way. So just remember that you're pressurizing the opposite side that you're turning. So with that covered I'm going to start tearing this thing down and uh, seeing what the guts look like. Kind of nice with the 12 point head because your bolt size is your socket size. 12 points on there, 5 16 bolt, 5 16 socket. All right, so now that we've got this thing apart, main component here is this manifold. Uh, like I said, that's got your in and out ports, so your pressure pump in and then return to tank and then left and right to each side of your cylinder. Uh, that's pretty much all this thing is. You can kind of see in there, see if you can see that. You've got some little holes drilled. Let's see, there you go. That one goes up to that port. We've got some right there to go up into this port. And then it looks like the two for the left and right are actually inside here in these two valleys. So, and then you've obviously got the hole pattern drilled right there too and that appears to be connected to all these holes here in the manifold. So that's the way those work. The flow actually flows into here, through here, and then gets routed back to wherever it needs to go. The part that actually does the routing is gonna be all here. This is really the brains of the whole thing. So we've got our steering shaft there. Uh, we've got this section here, which is your valve section. This is gonna be what controls where the flow is going. Um, you can actually see if I take this, put the steering shaft back in there. These springs in here actually allow it to rotate one way or the other. When you're at neutral position like this, all the valves are open, so everything is getting pressed. Left and right cylinders getting pressure from the pump. And then when you're turning left, block off the flow to one side. And then up here, doing that will open the flow to that side. And then turning it the other way obviously closes that side and opens up that side. This is the manifold block that pairs up with this bolt pattern on this. It goes on there like that and just lines up with all those holes. 
and then this part is what actually controls how much fluid is flowing. So this will be varying size based on how much displacement your, your orbital valve has. So obviously the bigger this section, the more fluid the cubic inches per revolution this pump will actually put out, which in a steering system basically fills that cylinder faster, allowing you to steer quicker. Bigger valves are fewer turns lock to lock because it takes less amount of turns to fill up that cylinder with a larger displacement through your orbital valve. That saddle right there drops onto that pin that's down in there. You can kind of see that down there. You can see. So this pin right here locks onto that to have your drive link, which is this part here. As you can see, that's all rounded over so that as this thing wobbles around to keep that centered, because this is always gonna be staying centered in the valve section here. So it has to be able to wobble back and forth in order to maintain that cent centered layout. So it's all sitting together. You can kind of see back here, especially. As I turn this, it opens it up and closes it. So when it, open, it opens up, it's pulling fluid in. This will pressurize too, because that, that mechanical push through there will pressurize that fluid. And that will force fluid into each of these or pull it out of each of those, and it'll help route it through the valve section, and that'll steer it to the left or the right, or straight back to the return tank if everything's open. Little overview is you have fluid coming in through the manifold here, the rotary action here will pressurize your valve section. And when you turn, your valve section is going to open up certain ports to allow flu the pressurized fluid going in, or it'll block them off to prevent it from going in. So that's what gives you a left or right action from your steering wheel. That's basically how these things work. Uh, we'll get this thing back together now, replace all the O-rings, and hopefully... Uh, stop the leakage. There you go. All rebuilt. Hopefully no leaks. Thanks for watching.